God save our gracious queen. Cut it! Or people here will make you their queen. I can also speak in limericks. Please don't. Beyond any grisly homicide or nasty arson case, the biggest crime suffered by LA Noir fans was the shuttering of developer team Bondi, since any prospect of a sequel has seemingly been snuffed out with it. The announcement of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, a reboot of developer Frogwares' long-running detective series that brings its established sleuth -em up gameplay into an open world, revived hope for a second coming of Cole Phelps and company. But I'm afraid those hopes have been dashed as well. Chapter 1's underfeatured open world and uninspired combat prevent it from solving the case of the missing great detective game. Chapter 1 sees the world-famous detective return to his childhood home on the fictional Mediterranean island of Cordona after he learns that there may have been more to the death of his mother than was initially reported. Sprawling in size and rich in period-accurate detail, Cordona gives the initial impression of an Assassin's Creed-style sandbox in which you must solve the murders rather than inflict them, using Sherlock's razor-sharp intellect in place of a hidden blade. However, a disappointing lack of interactivity means it's not nearly as interesting to explore as it first seems. Uncovering what really occurred within the walls of Stonewood Manor becomes the focal point of Chapter 1's story. But getting to the bottom of it requires solving a 12-hour long series of intriguing and diverse detours, and the solutions to these cases often hinge on the use of some entertainingly unique methods. Yes, that is indeed a homemade inflatable elephant love doll. This younger Sherlock is presented to us as being a novice private eye, but he's already got a near supernatural perception of the superficial. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. Really, the only thing missing from Sherlock's toolkit this time around is his usual offsider, John Watson. Instead, Sherlock is flanked by his imaginary friend, who is confusingly also named John. Thank you for your support, John and he substitutes as Sherlock's sounding board while he studies each crime scene using the established detection techniques that return from previous games in the series. It's him! Excellent, now I can make a sketch and take it to the police. Unlike the overly simplified nature of the investigations in Sega's recent Judgment games, Chapter 1 gives you a little more latitude when it comes to solving each case. Chasing a lead doesn't merely require following patronizing markers generated on the map, but a more challenging combination of legwork, research, and critical thought. Certainly at its best, Chapter 1 does a convincing job of making you feel like a proper sleuth arriving at your own deductions, which can be genuinely gratifying for stretches at a time. Wait, what? Is this Mother's magnifying glass? The trouble is that the general lack of hand-holding can sometimes mean that identifying how to advance an investigation can become a bit too obtuse at times and Chapter 1 can be poor at giving useful feedback to the player. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? Well, yeah. I mean, you are wearing a vest covered in sharp tools. In one case, I tried to infiltrate a shelter for the poor, but was continually turned away no matter how dirty and disheveled I rendered Sherlock's disguise. This shabby suit that smells like fish should do the trick. Keep moving, moneybags. This place is not for the likes of you. All right, then. How about these vagabond rags? Keep moving, money bags. This place is not for the likes of you. Money bags? Seriously? It's in progress halting instances such as these that John could have perhaps played the role of some sort of organic hint system. But all he ever does is tell you that you're doing it wrong without offering any useful alternatives. You sure you know what you're doing? As far as imaginary friends go, John is less Tyler Durden and more of a whining burden. I don't get your decision. We did all that work, and in the end, nothing about this case changed. Each investigative misstep is also marked by the exact same scribblings in John's diary, and by the end of Chapter 1's campaign I found myself thumbing through pages and pages of the same repeated sentences, as though I'd hired Jack Nicholson's character from The Shining to be my own private secretary. Running into roadblocks during a case wouldn't be so bad if there was anything else to do. But Chapter 1 fails to provide much in the way of interesting side activities to indulge in. The surprisingly large Cordona map is certainly postcard pretty in parts, 
but there's just not enough to do in it to inspire or reward exploration beyond a nice bit of sightseeing. On very rare occasions, I would eavesdrop on a conversation that would reveal a substantial new side case, but for the most part, I'd just walk around desperate for something to interact with. With so little to distract myself with along the way to each destination, I found myself increasingly reliant on fast travel to get around, thus making Chapter 1's open world feel not all that different from the more segregated settings of previous Sherlock games. Take a rest. When Sherlock isn't poking holes in witnesses' testimonies, he's blasting holes in bad guys' chestimonies. Over the course of an investigation, Sherlock will sometimes find himself trapped in a firefight against waves of increasingly powerful thugs. Whether it's a barroom or a boat shed, these arenas are all more or less identical in layout and feature the same sort of environmental hazards you can use to momentarily stun an opponent, allowing you to rush in for an arrest. Don't cry, you'll live. However, it doesn't really matter if you cuff them or snuff them, since there are no moral repercussions for just murdering every goon you come up against. Hey, you could have kept him alive. Given that Sherlock has unlimited pistol ammo, it's far simpler to shoot baddies in the head than it is to try to slowly maneuver them around in an attempt to subdue them non-violently. <laughs> While it's true that you're awarded more cash for arrests than for kills, there's no great motivation to earn more money when all you've got to spend it on is newspapers or furnishings for Sherlock's house. Do you know anything else about the dead body in the safe? Well, there is the rule of threes. You can survive three weeks without food, three days without water, three hours in harsh weather, and three minutes of you talking without air. I'm sorry, did you say something? Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 presents an interesting set of mysteries to solve, but its open world setting doesn't really elevate its familiar investigation gameplay to a substantial enough degree and its combat sections are uniformly dull and repetitive. There are certainly bursts of satisfaction to be earned when you get on a roll with an inquiry. My work here is done. But too often the vague case criteria can cause your sleuthing to stall and force you to fall back on guesswork. While the annoyingly unhelpful advice from John only makes these moments feel all the more frustrating. Oh, is Sherlock grumpy? Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is a decent detective game set in an open world that's a bit too elementary. For more IGN reviews, check out our verdicts on Forza Horizon 5 and Call of Duty Vanguard. And for everything else, stick with IGN. And here's our lovesick friend.